Chapter 2 Renaissance and Feudalism A. Medieval Feudalism The medieval Europe witnessed the development in the institution of feudalism. Feudalism was the institution of the survived administration based on the tenure of land and the contractual relationship between the landholders. The feudal society was based on the principles of service and security. The institution of feudalism implied that the meek people should serve the mighty people in exchange for protection and security. Though the feudalism existed in all over the Europe in medieval period, its structure was different. Feudalism survived in Europe from 9th century to 14th century. The Roman emperors conquered the Middle and North Europe and expanded their empire. The Romans started leading luxurious life, having power and prosperity in the course of time. The Germanic Hun tribes across the border frequently attacked the Roman Empire. Germanic general Advoca defeated the last Roman emperor, Samuel Augustus, and declared himself as the emperor in 1476 AD. This is considered as the beginning of the medieval age of the European history. Nature of Feudalism Land ownership was the source of power in feudalism. The entire land of the kingdom was basically owned by the king. The king had distributed the land among his nobles for cultivation. The senior nobles, dukes and earls, distributed the land to the subordinate nobles, barons. These noble lords leased their land to the vassals. The vassals received protection from the nobles. They had to serve nobles in exchange of protection. They promised to be faithful to the lords. The institution of feudalism was based on service, loyalty and protection. In feudal arrangement, the king was at the apex of the feudal pyramid. He had his control over the institution of feudalism. Below the king were most powerful lords or nobles, dukes and earls, lesser lords, baron and lowest lords, knights. This was the structure of feudalism. The vassals and the army of the noble were loyal to their masters instead of the king. The lords and nobles were very powerful in this system. The farmers, cultivators and laborers, serfs, were at the bottom of the feudal system. The feudal structure was a pyramidal structure with the king at the top. Feudal Society The feudal society was divided into three classes. The upper class consisted of the aristocratic lords and nobles. It was the most powerful class of the feudal society. The feudal nobility enjoyed the privilege of power and wealth. The middle or second class was the inhabitants of the town and cities. The third class was of farmers and serfs. These farmers and serfs actually cultivated the land. However, they were treated as slaves and bonded laborers. They were leading very miserable life. The miserable life of the common people was the greatest drawback of the feudalism. The Holy Roman Empire By the 8th century, the Franks had occupied most of the Central and Northern Europe. Charles the Great or Charlemagne was crowned as the King of Franks in 768 AD. He established his sovereignty over a wide territory which included the present France, Germany, Belgium, Holland, that is, Netherlands, Switzerland, Austria, Italy and Spain. Charlemagne established political stability in Europe during his regime. Charlemagne adopted Christianity as the official religion of his state. He received the support of the supreme religious head of Europe, that is, Pope. Pope declared Charlemagne as Roman Emperor. As Charlemagne had the support and blessing of Pope, 
His empire was known as the Holy Roman Empire. The Holy Roman Empire was very vast. So, Charlemagne faced many difficulties in administration because of economical instability of the empire. To sort out the economical crisis, Charlemagne started a new custom of rewarding his nobles by granting them land in exchange of military service. This new custom brought forward the class of rulers, namely feudal lords. In this way, the institution of feudalism came into existence. The Growing Importance of the Manors The well-fortified castle of the feudal lords and its surrounding area was called as Mena. The Mena consisted of the castles of nobles, the cottages of farmers, churches, granaries and the field adjoining them. The Mena had a great significance in medieval Europe. Every Mena was a financially self-sufficient unit. The feudal lords lived at Mena in the style of the king. They had their courts in their Mena houses. The subordinate lords and serfs attended the court. The farmers and the people of the locality surrendered their land and property as well as manpower to these lords. They celebrated fair and the festivals at the Mena. They organized the sports, activities and get-together. Every Mena was self-sufficient and politically autonomous. The Menas helped the empowerment of the feudal system. Supporting Local Need The basic needs of the masses, especially the farmers in the medieval Europe, helped the prosperity of lords and development of feudalism. The aggressive tribes and their attacks caused a great threat to the farmers. Sometimes farmers had to lose their life in such attacks. Consequently, the farmers felt the need of protection of their life and property. They therefore willingly handed over their lands to the landlords in exchange for safety and security. The farmers acquired the judicial power in land tenancy. Thus, the farmers became slaves of landlords and nobles. The judicial system collapsed due to weak centralized power. The functioning of judgment regarding land disputes was stopped. The nobles started to give verdict on the issues related to the land in their own states. Thus, the farmers also accepted the judicial rights and interferences of the nobles. The farmers had handed over their lands to the noble lords. They depended on these lords for their financial needs. The farmers had to pay a certain amount of their agricultural land to the nobles for the sake of security. They were compelled to sell their agricultural products to the lords. The farmers relied heavily on the nobles for financial assistance. The rapid decline of economical situation of the farmers helped for the emergence of feudalism. Thus, the feudalism became a powerful system in Europe. The Weak Central Power The successors of Charlemagne were very weak and incompetent. They lost their control over the administration. The emperors had to rely on feudal lords and nobles for security and protection. Naturally, the central power became weak and feudal lords and nobles became more powerful. The feudal army and the subordinates were loyal to their lords instead of the emperor. This led to the weakness of the central power. The feudal lords became independent. The nobles and their army got an upper hand. It dominated the weak central power. Decline of Centralized Administration With the fall of the Roman Empire, the centralized administration declined in Europe. Economical crisis necessitated the decentralization of administration. Decentralization became the need of the time. 
the agricultural land was distributed in hierarchical order. The agricultural land was distributed in hierarchical order amongst the kings, nobles, lords, and farmers. All this situation stimulated the feudalism. Nobles usurped all power and accumulated important rights in administration. Thus, the lords became powerful in their states. The Concept of Feudalism of India After the decline of Maurya and Gupta dynasty, the emergence and development of feudalism took place in India. The nature and the structure of feudalism was totally different than that of the Europeans. The Indian feudalism was primarily related with the financial matters of land. The Indian feudalism has its own origin in the practice of granting the lands. There were two units, noble lords and serfs. The farmers and serfs had to perform their business through lords. The lineage of lords and farmers were hereditary. The lords provided security to farmers and serfs, vassals. The farmers had to pay a larger part of their income to the lords. As a result, the lords became wealthy and farmers became poor. The lords received a license of power by paying protection money to the king. Samudra Gupta conquered many states of southern India and included them in his empire. However, he gave them internal autonomy. The roots of feudalism in India can be seen in the policies of Samudra Gupta. During the medieval age, feudalism became stronger than before. Feudalism existed in Muslim rule in India. In the dynasty of Vijayanagar, Nayaks were the lords. Feudalism was in existence in the Bahamani state. There was change in the crowns, but the local lords and nobility remained same. During the Maratha rule, Chhatrapati Shivaji confiscated the grants of land from the lords like Deshmukhs, Deshpandes, etc. He started to pay these lords. After the crisis of attack of Aurangzeb on Maratha state, Chhatrapati Rajaram had to restart the practice of granting lands as Vatans or Jahagir. He began to give lands to the victorious knights after the battles. The practice of granting lands grew in British rule. These little states had their existence in British rule with Jahagirs and knights. All these independent provinces were emerged into India after independence. The contemporary structure of the feudalism in India can be seen in Hyderabad province. The pattern of Zamindari, land grant, existed in Telangana. Few landlords had become the owners of large regions. They occupied thousands of acres of land. The farmers were treated as bonded laborers or serfs. Their condition was very miserable. The system of Jahagir, territory granted by the ruler, was prevailing in the parts of Marathwada and Karnataka. The Jagirdars, owners of small territory, exploited the farmers and serfs. Rise of Feudalism and its Reasons Political Instability The fall of the Roman Empire led to the political upheaval in Europe. Charlemagne tried to improve the situation by forming the great empire in Europe. However, the emperors who succeeded Charlemagne disintegrated the empire. It created havoc and there was a battle for power in Europe. This created political anarchy in Europe. This situation gave the opportunity to the lords and nobles to establish their supremacy in all aspects. The lords and nobles strengthened their power and became sovereign rulers in Europe. Thus, the feudalism secured its sovereign rulers in Europe. Thus, it was the reason for the rise of the feudalism in Europe. The Decline of Feudalism 
In a later phase of the Middle Age, the decline of the feudalism in Europe started. There are various reasons of decline of feudal system. There were many drawbacks in this system. The institution of feudalism was based thoroughly on inequality and harassment. The European economy was in the state of transition. The traditional barter system was outdated and it was replaced by use of coins as means of exchange. The people started using currency for the financial matters. The development in the transportation gave rise to the trade and commerce. Now, commercial centers such as Venice, Genoa and Florence came to the forefront. The new class of financially prosperous merchants originated in Europe. This class supported the crown for their benefit. As a result, the king and the monarchy became powerful. The influence of the noble lords decreased. The lords took part in crusades in order to protect the Christianity. The kings led these lords in it. The kings became influential and owned prestige. The monarchy was threatened. The political importance of lords decreased. It marked the beginning of the decline of feudalism. The transformation in social structure and economy accelerated the decline of feudalism. The French Revolution of 1789 proved to be final blow on the feudal system. The Religious Wars Crusades The wars fought between the Christian and Muslims are called as Crusades. These two religions fought for ten times to establish their sovereignty. These battles continued from 11th to 13th century. The Christians fought these wars against Muslims to expand their religion and to get economical and political benefits. These wars were called as Crusades, as the religion was at the heart of the society. It had influenced the people and their life. The large number of people from all sects of the society extended their support to serve the religious cause. The Turks had captured the pilgrim place Palestine of Jesus. They attacked the Christian missionaries and the common people visiting Palestine. The Turk attacked the pilgrims visiting the holy Christian place like Jerusalem. These actions aroused a storm of indignation throughout Europe and awakened the desire to rescue the holy land. Peter the Hermit raised the voice against the Turk injustice and persecution of church going Christians in Palestine. Peter the Hermit brought awareness among the Europeans. Pope Urban II appealed to the Christian world to emancipate Jerusalem. The Christians responded positively and participated in the war. They wanted to restrain the Islamic influence in West and to propagate Christianity in the West. The Arabs had established their supremacy over Africa and Spain. The Crusaders wanted to have a check on these activities of Muslims. The Christians could not rescue Jerusalem from the Turk invasion as the Catholics took part in the Crusade. Their influence increased in Christian world. To propagate Christianity, the missionaries decided certain policies. The religious institutions assumed importance. They became prosperous. There was rise of nationalism and pride for the patriotism in Christian people. As European king took part in crusades, they achieved significance in the society. The decline of feudalism began in Europe. The facilities of transportation increased trade. Many new cities and towns developed as centers for trade. The economy of Europe underwent many transformations. The crusades between Christians and Muslims united the Eastern and Western cultures. They understood each other. They came to know better things in other religion. It brought the cultural awareness. The Eastern and the Western cultures met each other. Points to remember The Roman Empire declined in 1476 AD. The medieval age began from this event. 
In 1453, Ottoman Turks captured the city of Constantinople, resulting in the fall of Byzantine Empire. This incident made a far-reaching effect on the history of the world. The institution of feudalism originated in the Holy Roman Empire. The feudal structure was a pyramidal structure. There were three classes in feudalism. First, noble lords. Second, middle class. Third, farmers and serfs. The lords lived in fortified manors. Manors had a great significance in medieval age. The Christians and Muslims fought crusades. Feudalism existed in India after the decline of Maurya and Gupta dynasty. Feudalism originated from the practice of land grant in India. Feudalism existed in India till the independence. The institution of feudalism declined because of its drawbacks. B. Reformation The European thinkers tried to remold the religion by protesting the Roman Catholic authority during 13th to 16th century AD. The reformers were divided into two groups over the course of reformation. The first group was of the opinion that the Roman Catholic Church was totally worsened. They thought of boycotting the church. The second group had the ideology that the church and religious principles can be reformed by sticking to it. The religious reformations of the 16th century were greatly influenced by the first group. Reformation is very effective means of social transformation. Reformations are carried out intentionally to achieve certain objectives. It is not an easy process. The reformers had to create favorable public opinions. They began the movement. The European scholars and thinkers brought about the religious reformation and awareness among the people. Consequences of Reformation First, the Reformation curbed the injustice of the Church. Second, this movement promoted the concepts of individualism and liberty. It caused the emergence of new values and ideas in Europe. Third, a new sect called as Protestant appeared in Christian religion. Similarly, many subsects appeared. Fourth, to spread the ideology of new sects, Many religious books were published in Europe. Fifth, Bible was translated in various European languages. The preaching of Bible reached to common people. The people were acquainted with the knowledge of their religion. Sixth, it caused a great shock to Roman Catholic Church and Pope's authority. Seventh, the influence of Pope on politics and Church came to an end. Eighth, every nation established its own religious organization and brought them under the control of the state. Ninth, the king became the head of political and religious organizations. This led to rise of absolute monarchy. Tenth, the European countries were divided into Catholics and Protestants. They fought many battles. Many countries became independent. It motivated nationalism. Europe witnessed changes and developments in education, trade, commerce, etc. 11. The individualism, personal property, human rights and liberalism got encouragement. 12. Reformation took place in England in 16th century. 13. Ignatius Loyola of England established the Society of Jesuits. This organization provided new ideology to Catholics. It opened the hospitals for the downtrodden, schools for education. It undertook the task of spreading Christianity around the world. The Pope also supported the reformations. These reforms initiated by Pope are known as counter-reformations. The Beginning of Reformation The Reformers produced many literary works for the Reformation in the religion. They founded various organizations. The Reformers explained the meaning of the true religion in simple language, which reached 
the common people. At that period, Pope Leo X had started the construction of St. Peter's Church. He began to raise funds for the construction. In order to collect funds, Pope started the sale of indulgences. The people were told that they could absolve themselves of their sins and could secure a sure place in heaven by purchasing these indulgences. The ignorant people bought them in large numbers. They were deceived by Pope. The reformers protested and agitated against the papal power. Many European rulers supported the reformers against Pope as Pope's interference in the matter of states also increased. In this way, the movement of reformation spread far and wide. Dominance of Religious Institutes in Middle Age Pope, the supreme religious power and the head of Roman Catholic Church, had a great political, social and religious influence in 16th century. His authority was considered as divine. The religion had its control on the behavior and practical life of the people. Even the royal authority was subsidiary to Pope. The Pope had the privilege to dethrone and ostracize the king from religion if he disobeyed the Pope. The interference by the church in political matters led to conflicts between the European rulers and the Pope. Church owned large properties and lands all over the Europe. The churchmen and priests were no more interested in religious matters. On the contrary, they had become pleasure, loving and hedonistic. Many malpractices, evil things entered in the church. The church became the centers of corruption. The bribery, collection of wealth, sale of indulgences were found in abundance. All these evils made the church the center of business. The common people were sidelined from the religious organizations. The European thinkers raised their voices against the functioning of the church. John Wycliffe, 1320 AD till 1384 AD. John Wycliffe is regarded as a pioneer of Reformation movement. He was the first to criticize the church and to lead the Reformation. Therefore, he is known as the Morning Star, Venus of Reformation. He was a professor in Oxford University. Wycliffe translated the Latin Bible into simple English that could be understood by common people who didn't have the knowledge of Latin language. He inspired the people to follow the Bible instead of authority of the Pope. He established an organization of poor clergies. He also started a movement to protest against the absolute power of the Pope. He openly challenged the superstitions of the age. As a result, he was dismissed from his job at Oxford University. His dead body was unearthed and was thrown in a dump. John Huss, 1369 AD, 1415 AD John Huss was a professor at University of Prague, Germany. He was profoundly influenced by Wycliffe. Huss criticized and condemned the church. He emphasized that the church must be reformed thoroughly. He revealed the real meaning of the Bible. He also disclosed the hypocrisy of the clergies. Due to his efforts, the movement of reformation reached Bohemia. The churchmen decided to punish Huss with death penalty for his anti-religious thoughts. He was burned at stake in 1415 A.D. De Erasmus, 1469 A.D. till 1536 A.D. Erasmus was a great proponent of Reformation. He was a profound learner of theology in Holland. He was a humanistic thinker. Erasmus wrote the book entitled in praise of folly. He strongly condemned the church in satiric style. His criticism caused a great damage to the church. The people began to question the loyalty of the priests. His writings brought an awareness among the people. He also strengthened the movement of reformation. 
Erasmus never openly agitated against the church. He criticized it only through his writings. Martin Luther, 1483 A.D. till 1546 A.D. Martin Luther was born in 1483 A.D. in Oliburn in the poor family of miners. Luther was a professor of theology and philosophy in Wittenberg University in Germany. He was known as a loyal monk and a great thinker. He became restless on watching the contradictions between the behavior of the priests and the true preaching of the Christianity. Luther publicly opposed the selling of indulgences by Pope. He published his 95 Theses Against Sale of Indulgences, Salvation Passes. He nailed these objections on the doors of church at Wittenberg. Martin Luther challenged Pope's authority. He translated the Bible into German language. He had to leave his job as a professor. Luther traveled all over Europe and propagated his ideas. He rejected the Pope's monopoly in church. He was of the view that every nation should establish its church. There should be personal liberty. It is the Bible and not the Pope that should be regarded as authority. There should not be any place for rituals in the religious activities. The relationship between the worshipper and the worshipped is purely an individual matter. He stated that the state authority should be greater than papal authority. Luther encouraged nationalism. His idea of liberty by faith was appreciated by the Europeans. Many rulers, knights, middle class, common people supported Martin Luther in the movement against church. Luther and his followers protested the Roman Catholic Church. Therefore, they came to be known as Protestants. Later, Protestant became a distinct sect of Christianity. The sect which was upheld by Luther is known as Puritan. Luther's reformations took form of movement. Zwingli, 1484 AD till 1531 AD. Zwingli was a priest in Switzerland. He fought against the Roman Catholic Church of his country. He criticized the hypocritical behavior of the priests. He insisted that we do not consider Pope as our authority, but only Bible is our authority. He started campaigning for his new religious ideas. He insisted that the Church should not be the whole and sole authority of Pope. It should become the democratic center for all Christians, which would allow the ordinary people to participate in it. He abjured the Catholic sect. Zwingli lost his life in a conflict with the followers of Pope at Capel in 1531 AD. The works of Zwingli spread Protestant sect in Switzerland. John Calvin, 1509 AD till 1564 AD. John Calvin was a French by birth. He was living in Switzerland as he was exiled from France. He was a lawyer by profession. Calvin studied theology and philosophy very deeply and wrote the book Institutes of Christian Religion. He provided the philosophical base to Protestant sect. According to Calvin, the people should read the Bible, listen to the sermons and follow the principles of Bible. The people should engage themselves in common prayers. They should avoid festivals, functions, merry-making sports and dancing. All these things will maintain the religious discipline. Because of his anti-democratic views, the people called him as Puritan dictator and his sect is called as Puritan. His thoughts influenced the people of France, Netherlands, Germany, Hungary, Poland and Scotland, etc. His ideas and thoughts accelerated the Reformation movement. C. The Renaissance. The Turks caused the fall of Constantinople, Istanbul, in 1453 AD. 
as the Turks had blocked the land routes to the eastern countries, there remained no possibility for European trade. The European merchants had to discover the new sea routes. The inventions of Mariner's Compass and Astrolabe proved to be favorable for navigation. Christopher Columbus discovered America in 1492 AD and Vasco da Gama discovered the sea route to India in 1498 AD. According to the French scholar Jules Millicott, the two significant achievements of Renaissance were the discovery of the world and the discovery of the man. The discovery of the world acquainted the Europeans with the new geographical territories like America, South Africa and Australia. The discovery of man means the acceptance of progress and independent ideology and rejection of religious fetters. According to the historian Davis, there were many restrictions imposed by the church on the liberal ideas. Renaissance was the free manifestation of such ideas. Renaissance is originally a French word meaning rebirth or revival. Europe witnessed extensive prosperity during later Middle Age. There were many thinkers and researchers in various walks of life. The Europeans were advanced in religious power, political power, economy, social structure, art, literature, science, etc. In short, Renaissance means the all-round progress in various fields of life. It represented social transition from medievalism to modernity. Architecture A great advancement took place in architecture during Renaissance. It was a beautiful combination of Greek, Roman and Arabic architectural styles. There was synthesis of Greek pillars, Roman arcs and Irani domes and carvings in architectural work. The style of architecture spread all over Europe. The Florence Cathedral by Filippo, Brunelleschi and Donato Brumente, and St. Peter's Cathedral, built by Michael Angelo and Raphael, are among the architectural masterpieces of the period. The Italian cities, Rome, Venice, and Florence became the centers of novel art. There was a progress in music also. The Christian reformers gave importance to music. The art of music was developed in Italy. The new musical instruments like violin and piano were introduced. Michelangelo, 1475 AD to 1564 AD. He was a well-known painter, sculptor, architect and a poet. He scientifically studied the human anatomy. His paintings at the Temple of Sistine Madonna are very famous. Sculpture. This is a great influence of ancient Greek and Roman style on the art of sculpture of Renaissance period. The realistic sculptures were carved in this age. Michelangelo, Donato Barmente, contributed greatly to sculpture of Renaissance. The statues of St. George and St. Mark are immortal sculptures of the age created by Donato. New Trends in Literature The powerful religion lost its grip on literature during Renaissance. The literature began to express man. The human life, his emotions, feelings, desires, aspirations found place in literature. The scientific study of European languages was started. The new literature propagated the values like humanism and secularism. The invention of printing brought about many revolutionary changes in the field of literature. The first printing press was started by Johannes Gutenberg in Germany in 1450 AD. The printing press proved helpful in printing of more books with little expense. The spread of knowledge facilitated the society to come out of conventional practices which ultimately resulted in progress of the society. 
The Italian writers contributed greatly during Renaissance. The literary men like Dante, Petrarch, Boccaccio, Machiavelli, etc. gave noteworthy contribution to the field of literature. Dante has given a message that man should lead his life in simple manner and with morality. Dante is regarded as the father of Italian poetry. Francisco Petrarch produced creative literature. He was appointed in the University of Paris for his popularity. Petrarch described the heart-rendering descriptions of mirth and sorrow in human life. He interpreted the classical literature with human perspective. He emphasized the feeling of humanism in Europe. He was the first proponent of the humanism. Petrarch is regarded as the father of humanism. New Expression in Art The art in the Middle Age was under the control of religious organizations. The art was mainly used for religious purposes. The mythological and scriptural events were the themes of painting and sculptures. There was no expression of real life in art. The art and life were totally differentiated. The movement of Renaissance originated humanism in Italy, which emancipated the art from the religious restrictions. The art became human-centered. There was expression of human feelings and emotions through art. The artists began depicting human form. The artists began depicting human form. Those were the characteristics of art during Renaissance. Drawing and painting. The art of drawing and painting developed during Renaissance. The paintings and drawings had the expressions which indicated the love of freedom, love of beauty, affinity to nature, and humanitarian approach. The painters and sculptors profoundly studied the human anatomy. They minutely observed the formation of various muscles and sculptures profoundly studied the human anatomy. They minutely observed the formation of various muscles and joints of the human body in action. The art of Renaissance found expression of such things in them. Leonardo da Vinci was the world famous painter 1452 AD to 1519 AD. He had the multifaceted personality. He was a poet, philosopher, musician and sculptor too. He studied human anatomy to give his paintings a realistic touch. He admired human faces and loved anatomy. He depicted blood vessels, human muscles minutely. It made his pictures lively. Vinci used mixed colors. His paintings of Mona Lisa and The Last Supper are regarded as eternal works of art. The painting of Mona Lisa is a painting of a mysterious beauty of a lady. He had painted the pictures of Jesus Christ and his followers in The Last Supper, which is regarded as ideal model of human portrayal. Raphael, 1483 A.D. to 1520 A.D. Raphael created many indefinable masterpieces in paintings. His paintings are famous for their beauty. Sistine Madonna is an eternal work. This picture is rated as the best work of art in the world because of its liveliness, attractions and color combination. Boccaccio, the disciple of Petrarch, depicted subtly the moral degradation of the aristocratic Italians in his tales. He formed his own style of satiric and humorous story writing. Machiavelli liberated politics from religious and moral restriction in his book, The Prince, and in his book he introduced the modern political ideology. The British authors had contributed significant contribution during the period of Renaissance. Geoffrey Chaucer, Thomas More, Jonathan Swift, William Shakespeare were among the prominent writers of England. Chaucer was a great poet of England. 
Sir Thomas More gave vivid descriptions of poverty in his Utopia. He narrated social issues and ignorance in it. Jonathan Swift's Gulliver Travels is a work of great fiction. William Shakespeare is a world-famous dramatist. 1564 to 1616 AD. Shakespeare's diction, style and presentation was second to none. He set a standard of drama for the world. His plays Hamlet, Julius Caesar, Macbeth and Romeo and Juliet were recognized as his world classics. His plays Hamlet, Julius Caesar, Macbeth and Romeo and Juliet are recognized as world classics. Spanish novelist Cervantes wrote Don Quixote. He had depicted the contemporary feudalism in it. Don Quixote is a criticism of the feudal life of the then Europe penned in satirical style. The Beginning of Modern Science The age of Renaissance witnessed a noteworthy progress in the field of science. The number of researchers had to face the anguish of the religious organizations. The common people of the Middle Age had their faith in naive and illusory myths without scientific approach. This situation was changing gradually during Renaissance. The Protestantism helped the people free themselves from religious restrictions. They increased the spirit of inquiry. The minute observation of the nature was started. The people started examining their previous knowledge of anatomy, astronomy, physics, etc. All this gave boost for the scientific research. Discoveries in Physics and Chemistry A large number of fundamental researches were carried out in physics and chemistry. Gilbert, 1540 AD to 1603 AD studied the symptoms of magnetism and presented the theories related to magnetism. Sir Isaac Newton 1642 AD to 1727 AD Sir Isaac Newton presented the theory of gravitation. He carried out experiments and searched the power that holds the universe together in the orbit. On the basis of mathematical rules, Newton pointed out that the nature functions according to the theory of gravitation. It is therefore that the objects do not go up but come down by gravitational force. Newton explained how the existence of the universe is retained by universal gravitation. The discoveries made by Newton disclosed the fact to the world that the universe is not a divine creation. Astronomical Discoveries There was a great advancement in the field of astronomy. The sighting of comet or a fall of a meteor was considered as a bad omen indicating future calamity. Many misconceptions about solar and lunar eclipses prevailed in the society. The discoveries in astronomy removed all those misconceptions. N. Copernicus 1473 A.D. to 1543 A.D. propounded new important theories after the deep study and observations of planetary system. He put the theory that the sun is at the center of the planetary system. The earth and other planets revolve around the sun. Traditionally, the people believed that the earth was the center of the universe and the sun revolves around the earth. This theory of Copernicus rudely shook the traditional belief. Therefore, the church branded him as heretic and tried to suppress his doctrines. Galileo, 1564 AD to 1642 AD The Italian scientist made the first telescope. He observed the planets through telescope and asserted that the universe is governed by fixed laws of nature. He was a strong supporter of the Copernicus theory. He too was accused as heretic and was imprisoned by the church. His books were banned. 
Galileo pursued the scientific facts till the end of his life. John Kepler, 1571 AD to 1630 AD, advocated the theory of Copernicus claiming the Sun is at the center of planetary system. Kepler proved that all the planets move round the Sun and their orbits are elliptical. Hence, the idea of circular orbit was left behind. William Harvey 1578 AD to 1657 AD made many researches on the blood circulation. He proved that the blood comes through a heart and reaches to various parts of a body through blood vessels and returns to the heart again for purification through arteries. The research of Harvey gave new direction to the study of medical science. Paracelsus and Holdmont carried out praiseworthy experiments in chemistry. Paracelsus son showed that the chemistry and medicines sorry repeat. Paracelsus son showed that the chemistry and medicinal science are interrelated. Holdman discovered carbon dioxide, CO2 gas. Renaissance was very fruitful for human being to attain the greatness and dignity. It gave impetus to humanism as a new religion. The scientific discoveries made human life comfortable and happy. The values like realism, rationalism, naturalism were promoted. The progress in art, literature and science marked the beginning of the modern age. Activity The movement of Renaissance brought the unprecedented progress in art, literature and science in Europe. Similarly, India in modern age witnessed development in literature and science. Try to collect the information of the person who contributed in the process of development and keep it with you. This activity is optional and not mandatory.